you're looking for treatment options for repeat pregnancy loss and you're anything like me, you might find all the different options and all the varying recommendations from different doctors rather dizzying. Some doctors say this treatment doesn't work, while another doctor says that it does work. The whole thing can be quite maddening. In this video, I will share a big picture view of how the immune system affects pregnancy. I will show you the main characters of the immune system that play a part in pregnancy. We will see how they relate to each other, feeding off of one another to either spell disaster or success for each pregnancy. And I will show you how many of the top treatment options currently available can help pregnancy outcomes, which hopefully will help you make an informed decision for your needs. I need to preface this video by saying that I have tried my best to make this video as accurate and up-to-date as possible. However, it is my greatest desire that by the time that a few months rolls around that we have more research on this topic and hopefully we'll have more answers than this video currently has. And there would be nothing that would make me happier than having to re-record this video to give you new answers. Now let's move on to the heart of the video. First, we'll look at the bad guys of the reproductive system. These are the things that can spell disaster for a pregnancy. First, we have the natural killer cells, sometimes simply referred to as NK cells. These guys are the special ops of your immune system. But I have to be honest, these guys aren't all bad. We actually need a few of them in order for implantation to occur. They help create holes or pockets in the uterine lining for the blastocyst to attach to and implant. So we have to have a few NK cells, but we want them to be under control. The problem comes in, often after two to three miscarriages, where these little guys get their kill switch activated. Then when this occurs, they are like a special ops team in the field with some serious PTSD. They've seen too much death, and who can blame them? They start shooting at anything that moves, and in a panic, they call in more bad guys for reinforcement. Here's where the cytokines come in. Cytokines are proteins that are like signals. They carry a signal and tell the rest of the immune system what to do. There are peaceful cytokines, which we'll talk about later, and then there are aggressive cytokines. This ratio of peaceful to aggressive cytokines is often called the Th1 to Th2 ratio. Th1 stands for T helper cell 1, and these cells produce bad cytokines. Th2 is T helper cell 2, and these cells produce good cytokines or peaceful signals. Some of the bad cytokines that are important in pregnancy are tumor necrosis factor, sometimes called TNF-alpha or just TNF, interferon gamma, sometimes called IFN, and granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, often referred to as GMCSF. Now let's look at the good guys. First, we have those Th2 cells, and they're peaceful cytokines we talked about. A dominance of Th2 is present in successful pregnancies, so we definitely want more of those. Examples of good cytokines include interleukin-10, sometimes called IL-10. There's also IL-4, IL-5, and IL-13. Next, we have T-regulatory cells, often called Treg for short. Treg cells are peacemakers. They help guide the immune system towards a more peaceful response to the baby. Then we have a little guy that's small but important. There are inhibitory receptors, KIR and NKG2A CD94+, on NK cells that essentially force the NK cell to calm down and stop all their killing. NK cells with these receptors are no longer a threat. Finally, there's an aspect that can either be good or bad depending on how similar you and your partner's DNA is. This is called the human leukocyte antigen, HLAC or HLAG. It is a small protein on the surface of your placenta cells that is a marker of sorts. Since the placenta is coded for by paternal DNA, the father's HLAG and HLAC will be expressed on the placenta cells. If the mother and father's DNA is too similar, the mother's killer Ig-like receptors, KIR, that line the uterine wall will recognize the HLAG on the placenta as altered self and think it is cancer, thus initiating an immune attack. However, if the mother and father's DNA is different enough, the HLAG markers on the placenta tells the mother that the baby is not self and should be protected, thus initiating a protective, peaceful response. This is called alloimmunity. Now let's take a look at how, how all of these cells relate to each other. Let's start with HLAG. In cases where the DNA is too similar, the HLAG will not be seen as non-self. 
Instead, the mother's body will think the baby is altered self, which can be confused as cancer. So it raises tumor necrosis factor. Raised tumor necrosis factor, or any TH1 cytokine, makes the NK cells cytotoxic, which is like turning on their kill switch. Tumor necrosis factor also leads to the production of, guess what? More tumor necrosis factor. They can be a self-fulfilling cytokine storm that can give you symptoms like joint pain or feeling like you have the flu. Tumor necrosis factor can also alert other cells to attack, like CD3, CD4, and CD8 T cells. Increased Th1 at high levels can also increase coagulation, which can be a problem for pregnancy. Now that the NK cells have been turned on, they'll begin attacking cells of, of the placenta and the baby, leading to cell demise. They also signal for more TNF and more IFN. And you guessed it, the more TNF and IFN leads to more activated NK cells, and more TNF and more IFN. And that leads to more cell demise, and it just keeps spiraling and spiraling until the pregnancy is no longer viable. But it's not just two genetically similar that can set off this spiral. Dr. Alan Beer said that after three miscarriages, most women have their NK cells activated in this cytotoxic position. You could also have elevated TNF from autoimmune diseases, such as rheumatoid arthritis, or you could have elevated NK cells from thyroid disease, endometriosis, pelvic inflammatory disease, allergies, IBS, Crohn's disease, or even just plain stress. Basically, any condition that causes either elevated Th1 cytokines or elevated NK cells will start this spiral as soon as you get pregnant, or in some cases, it can happen as soon as fertilization occurs, thereby completely blocking implantation from occurring and causing implantation failure. So this is the really dark, big, scary view of immunological pregnancy loss, or at least what we know today. Now let's shine some light on this view with treatment options. First, there's LIT. Leukocyte Immunization Therapy. I have a whole video on the details of LIT, but what we know from research is that proper LIT protocols can lower Th1 bad cytokines and raise peacemaker Treg cells. Lower Th1 means less cytotoxic NK cells and less TNF and less IFN. It also means more Th2 dominance, which we know leads to healthy pregnancy. Higher Treg cells lower Th1 as well. It's also been theorized that LIT helps with creating blocking antibodies that allow for more HLAG. HLAG, with the help of HLAC, switches off NK cells, possibly using the NK94 inhibition marker. It binds to the surface of the NK cells and turns it off. So you can see how LIT can slow and possibly stop the negative spiral. It helps build up the good guys and take away the bad guys. There are also anti-TNF agents like Humira and Enbrel. Anti-TNF agents are an injection that lowers TNF and thereby leads to a Th1-Th2 ratio that is more healthy. Lower TNF also leads to less activation of additional NK cells. Another treatment option we have is intralipids. An intralipid infusion is a blend of soybean oil, egg yolk, phospholipids, and glycerin that is administered through an IV. It has been theorized that intralipids suppress Th1 cytokines such as TNF and IL-6, and it also helps calm down the NK cells using a special receptor cell called PPAR. Fun fact, Ming et al. found in 2012 that intralipid treatment starting at the third day of menstrual cycle mm -hmm. and continued every two weeks until 12 weeks of pregnancy has the same effectiveness as the much more expensive IVIG. Which brings us to the most expensive treatment option, IVIG. Intravenous immunoglobulin, it acts on the same CD94 receptor that we saw with HLAG. It binds to the NK cells and turns them off. IVIG can reduce activated NK cells by 60%. Next, there's prednisone, which is a steroid medication that is thought to bind to NK cells using a glucocorticoid receptor, and it can reduce activated NK cells by about 14% if started before conception. Hydroxychloroquine, HCQ, or also called Plaquenil, 
is used to treat malaria, but it can also decrease the bad cytokines like interleukin-1, 2, 6, TNF, and interferon gamma by promoting the Th2 processes that prevail in normal pregnancy. Finally, there's nupogen or filgrastim, which is an injection of granulocyte colony stimulating factor, GCSF, that has been shown to raise Treg cells. Treg cells lower bad Th1 cytokines and help elicit a peaceful immune response. I hope the first thing you can see is that there is probably no one right or wrong treatment for all immunological recurrent miscarriages. Each treatment works by affecting different parts of the immune system. And while some people might only need one type of treatment, others might need multiple. I also hope seeing this was as helpful to you as it was for me. And I hope that now you can feel more confident about making a decision about your treatment choice. If you did find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like the video below. Let me know in the comments if there's a treatment option you'd like to know more about. Maybe I can make a video about that. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you hope on your journey wherever it take you.